How do you get pregnant? Now that you're ready to take this next step, what do you need to know? Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. First of all, if you are here, you are here for fertility facts and education, and I would love it if you would subscribe. Today I'm talking about how to get pregnant. If you are like me, I spent years preventing a pregnancy, like years and years and years on birth control pills, making sure that I was not going to get pregnant because it was just not in my timeline. And to be honest, despite the fact that I'm a physician, when it was time to get ready, I didn't really understand all the things that I needed to do to have the highest chance of getting pregnant the fastest. That's what I want to review with you today. Okay, the first thing to know is that if you're planning on a pregnancy, we want to have regular periods. So if your periods are not regular, that is a big warning sign that you need to go and check with your doctor and make sure that you don't have any other abnormality. Common things that can cause irregular periods can be stress, heavy exercise, caloric deficiency, PCOS, thyroid disease, high prolactin levels, obesity, there's a lot of things. So if your periods aren't regular and predictable, then you need to go see help right away. If you're preventing pregnancy with a form of contraception like birth control pills, you can just stop them if you're ready to get pregnant. If you're in the in-between and not quite ready, I recommend using a barrier method like a condom or pulling out or something to prevent a pregnancy if you're not 100% regular. Some women resume ovulation immediately upon stopping the pill. Some women, it takes just a couple cycles to kick back in gear. If you've stopped the birth control pill or stopped any form of contraception, like had your IUD removed, and your periods are not back in regular by that three month interval, go see your doctor. Make sure there's nothing else standing in your way. But let's presume your periods are regular, you're not on birth control pills, and now you're ready. What do you do? First, you want to make sure that you are setting the right environment. A prenatal vitamin is essential. It is very important because there are preventable birth defects and diseases miscarriages and other things that can happen if we have nutrient deficiencies. So we want to make sure you are taking a prenatal vitamin. Probably one of the top questions I get asked is which prenatal vitamin is best. And I promise you if one of them was best, we would like pass it out like candy to everybody. As long as you're taking a prenatal vitamin that has folic acid or folate in it, that is going to be important. You need 400 micrograms a day to prevent against a neural tube defect. Neural tube defects are deformities in the neural system, the brain, spinal cord, limb development, and so they can be really debilitating and they can be preventable. Folic acid is also essential in cell division. If you don't have enough folic acid, you may have an increased chance of miscarriage. I do recommend my patients take a methylated folate, there's not tons of evidence to support that in everybody or support testing for folate deficiencies in everybody, but it is just a form of folate that's already been processed once. And I usually find that that's just making everybody feel better in case they had a deficiency of an enzyme needed to process folate, that they would still be covered. Number two is to do like a quick look at your life and just make sure that you are doing things right. Like if you're smoking cigarettes and marijuana, you want to stop that stuff if you want to get pregnant. Take out environmental chemicals when you can and make sure that you're putting good, clean, healthy food foods into your body whenever possible. Okay, but to the meat of what you're asking is, I've been preventing pregnancy for so long, I don't even know what exactly I need to do now that I'm ready to get pregnant. You wanna have sex during your fertile window, but what is your fertile window? That's like the huge question most women have. So a lot of us use apps, and I think that's a really easy way to keep track of when your period is. Apps all use a mathematical formula that is calculating when your period is. By doing that, they are using a well-known formula to calculate the length of the luteal phase and subtracting that to be your most common day of ovulation. So the classic is however long your cycle is, day number one is the first day you bleed, the last day of your cycle is the day before the next period. So if your cycles are every 28 days apart, then you have a 28 day cycling. 14 days is the average length of the luteal phase. And so these apps take 28 days minus 14. They call that the day that you ovulate and the five days prior as your fertile window. That whole five day thing is just because that's how sperm lives. Sperm can actually live in the female reproductive tract for up to five days. So five days ending on the day of ovulation is considered the fertile window. Now, most sperm do not live that long, so the closer to ovulation that you can have sex, the better. And so a huge point of how do we get pregnant is going to be to know when to have intercourse. But if you're just starting out and you don't wanna like make it overly complicated, but you wanna have a higher efficiency of getting pregnant, you're going to say, okay, great, we are having sex 
during my fertile window. You're going to calculate that five day window ending on the day of ovulation by just doing the mathematical equation. Length of your cycle minus 14 equals day of ovulation. Five days prior ending on that day, that's your fertile window. Can you have sex every day or should it be every other day? This depends on your sexual habits. If you're a sex every day kind of couple, don't have less. If you are not, then this is a good opportunity to have sex at least every other day. That's because most of those sperm will survive for about 24 to 48 hours. So if you're having sex every other day, you're gonna capture whatever day that you ovulate. The egg only lasts for 24 hours. So we really wanna have some sperm present either because you have intercourse that day or because you recently did and sperm is waiting for that egg in order to fertilize on that day. I cover specifics about top tips with sex to get pregnant in another video that's actually one of my most popular videos. So look at that one if you've got questions about like position and do you need to lay flat afterward and basic about intercourse and getting pregnant. But in general, you're timing it into that fertile window. So for the average woman whose periods are every 28-ish days, if you start having sex around day 10 to 15, you're gonna cover your basis. That is usually going to work for most people. You can get a little bit more scientific about it without stressing yourself out too much, and that may be wanting to check to see exactly when you ovulate. If you're gonna check when you ovulate, you really wanna to try to target sex on the day before or the day you ovulate. OPK is an ovulation protector kit. This is a little stick that you pee on. So literally, you're gonna pee on it. Here's my like flashing news, is that I do not know why the box says to use your first morning urine. I guess it's because they want it concentrated enough to make sure it's not too dilute, but the reality is that test is measuring LH. LH is a hormone that comes from the brain that is going to stimulate the body to release an egg. Well, LH is released in the early morning hours. So if you're gonna use an ovulation predictor kit, please, please, please use it correctly, and that is between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. You've gotta get that hormone time to get from your brain, through your bloodstream, through your kidneys, and into your urine. So use it one time per day between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The day you get a positive is the day of your LH surge. The surge is what triggers ovulation, and so you will ovulate the next day. So you're gonna have sex the day of the OPK and the next day if possible, or at least one of those days. And save your money. After you get a positive, don't keep checking. Word of caution, these are not helpful if you have irregular cycles. You're gonna spend a lot of money, it's gonna be really frustrating, and women with PCOS tend to get false positive OPKs all the time. So please, please, please do not do that to yourself. The other option is just check cervical mucus. So cervical mucus is super easy and free, which most of us really like. Uh, you're gonna put your fingers into your vagina, pull it out, stretch the mucus, and if it's consistency like egg white, you know it when you see it, that is from high estrogen. High estrogen levels make your cervical mucus less viscous and easier for the sperm to swim through, and it becomes stretchy like those egg whites. And so if you're checking your cervical mucus, you wanna have sex the day you get that stretchy egg white stuff. I get asked all the time about BBT or basal body temp. This is when you like check your temperature. Back in the old days, we would like graph it on graph paper and have patients come in with this graph full of their temperature. A real quick note, BBT is to check that your progesterone rises. Your progesterone rises after you ovulate. So you get a temp shift after you ovulate. So it's a confirmation that you did in fact ovulate. Some of these more modern techniques that are taking your temperature or you're wearing them, they are using uh, progesterone levels to detect a BBT and they're predicting that into a model for you for future cycles. So they are similarly just using an equation. I typically find those more expensive or cumbersome, but some people really like it or they like that extra confirmation that they did in fact ovulate. And so for them, I think that's great. Although a side note, if you're getting your period about two weeks after what you think is your ovulation day, you're ovulating. Women do not have regular periods unless they're ovulating. So for us in office, as a fertility doctor, I just check your history. I ask you good questions about your period, about tracking your cycles, and that's how I determine that you're ovulating. I don't go do tests of ovulation anymore. That's not what we do. Your history is the best way to tell if you're ovulating. Okay, and then if you're trying to get pregnant, how long should you try before you should go get help? First of all, if you cannot have sex, if it's too painful, problems with erection ejaculation or irregular periods, or if you are trying to detect ovulation and you cannot for some reason, go get help right away. Other people who should go get help right away is older women. So if you're over age 40, you should just go get an evaluation right away. Time is really important and not quite on your side, although not nearly impossible at all. We just wanna make sure your tubes aren't blocked, the sperm is okay, and we know what we're dealing with 
before we get too far into the process. If you're over age 35, so if you're between age 35 to 39, we usually recommend trying for about six months. And if you're not pregnant within that time frame, then you should go get a formal evaluation. And if you're under age 35, so if you're 34 or less, you can try for a year. And if you haven't gotten pregnant, then you should go seek help. All of this to be said, that is the textbook recommendation. You can get an evaluation of your fertility at any time, even before you're ready to get pregnant, because there's some things that your period and your menstrual cycle will not tell us. It will not tell us if your tubes are blocked. It will not tell us how many eggs you have left. A man's ability to achieve or maintain an erection is not an indication that he's got normal sperm in his ejaculate. We may have no signs or clues that there is infertility, purely except not getting pregnant upon the timeline which we expect. I love seeing patients earlier in their journeys. I love talking about your goals, how many kids you want, and I hate wasting time. I have other more detailed videos on age and fertility that I hope you check out. As always, you can learn more on the As Women podcast, which has an in-depth review of fertility topics. Thanks, friends.